Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Great. Um, I'm your moderator today. My, my name is Caroline Hamachi Mugala. I'm the Executive Secretary of the East Africa Trade Union Confederation. Um, I would like to welcome you to this uh, very important uh, session uh, on South-South uh, Triangular Cooperation. Uh, just to try and uh, set the pace to the discussion uh, this afternoon, um, the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development and the Addis Ababa Action Agenda acknowledges um, the increase, increased importance on South-South cooperation uh, for eradicating poverty and you know, coming from, from, from a developing country, specifically Kenya and from the East African region. This is uh, really important to uh, ensuring achieving of sustainable development. And in order to, uh, for these resources to be used for, uh, to maximum impact, it is vital that they are used effectively. However, understanding the South-South cooperation differs fundamentally from North-South development assistance, and there is a need to reflect on what effectiveness means in this. Paragraph 11 of the outcome document of the second high-level uh, United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation, uh, which recognizes the need to enhance the development uh, effectiveness of South-South and triangular cooperation. Today, uh, our session uh, uh, will reflect uh, from, a south, from, from South and providers on the effective, what effectiveness means to them and how they are ensuring the effectiveness of, the, of their cooperation. And I'm privileged to have a very rich uh, panel. I know we are starting late, but we'll try as much as possible to catch up on time. I have Mrs. Diana. Sandiwati, Senior Advisor to the Minister on, the, on Institutional Relation, Ministry of National Development Planning and National Development Planning Agency of Indonesia. I have Mr. Noel Gonzalez, Director uh, General for Planning and Development Cooperation Policies uh, from Mexican Agency for International Development Cooperation. I also have Ms. Marita Gonzalez, I have two Gonzalez on the panel today, who is the co-chair of the Civil Society Partnership for Development. I have Professor Sanchin Chatuvendi, Director General, Research and Information Systems for Development Countries. I also have uh, Mr. Enrique Ofari, uh, Chief Department of Bilateral and Multilateral Cooperation, Chilean International Cooperation Agency for Development. I also have uh, Mr. Hohe, who is from the United Nations uh, South-South Cooperation. To just kick off the discussion without wasting time, I would like to invite um, uh, Mr. Hohe. Uh, to start off, you know, the discussion, you know, from a UN perspective on South-South cooperation and how we are doing, uh, what can be done to improve in terms of the different reports that have been uh, published. I've read the Mexican report and it's, it's actually really, really interesting, but it has also brought up uh, uh, certain gaps that were also mentioned in the opening remarks with regards to some of the things that are dragging uh, issues around equality that the Mexican uh, report also alluded to. So welcome you. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Uh, you mentioned paragraph 11 of the outcome document of BAPA that took place in March of this year in, in Buenos Aires. And that document that sounds, that paragraph that sounds very commonsensical was the culmination of a very complex process of many years. Uh, when the whole effectiveness agenda was introduced, South-South cooperation that was growing at the time indicated that the parameters under which it was premised should not apply to South-South cooperation for several reasons. Number one, the emphasis on the quantitative indicators, the measurement based on funds. Also, 
the reluctance to accept that some of the principles were really being implemented. There was also a political reading. Also the fact that they did not consider the political space under which uh, this type of information was reported, namely the OECD, was the space for them to share this information because it's an organ for which they are not members. And as a result, for many years, we can even say for the last 15 years since Paris, we have a dialectic. On one hand, you had the countries of the North saying, we have a, a framework, an institutional and a conceptual framework, and we have methodologies. Why don't you join us? And then we had the South arguing that South-South cooperation is intrinsically different, is qualitatively different to North-South cooperation. Therefore, those methodologies cannot be utilized and also the institutional framework is not acceptable. So for many years we had that and the world has changed. On one hand, South-South cooperation has become significantly more important. The countries of the South uh, also have developed uh, a lot of technical and intellectual capacity to review South-South cooperation and to present alternatives, analytical ones. And we have here Dr. Chaturvedi, who's one of the prominent intellectuals of the South that are working on it. And at the same time, from the North, this agenda has had problems. If we see the indicators that were presented today, many of the elements of progress that were implicit in, in Paris and Busan are either stagnant or even going backwards. So in a way, we have an ideal situation to really think forward. Or let's see, we can have a, a, a new discussion or a renewed discussion on uh, effectiveness that can encompass both north-south, south-south, and importantly, triangular cooperation, which incidentally was given a specific identity in the BAPA outcome document, which did not have at the political uh, level before. So now, in addition to that, which is theoretical, we have now the political space to do that discussion, to have that discussion. It is called for in the outcome document to work on the development of methodologies to make, to assume, as it was mentioned in paragraph 11, about the effectiveness, also about how to work uh, on measurement and reporting South-South cooperation, always under the, the guidance of the, and the decisions of member states, but that space is there. So I want to finalize my intervention by saying that we have a great challenge ahead of us and inviting those countries and organizations that want to join this effort, I put my office at your disposal because we have demanded the UN Office for South-South Cooperation to coordinate these discussions, to help try to achieve this synthesis because sometimes these methodological discussions have very strong political underpinnings and sometimes weaken the possibility of having more and better South-South and triangular cooperation. And the world needs as much and as good as we can get. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hohe, for setting the, 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 the pace and kind of give, giving us some uh, where we are coming from, where we are going to. Um, I would like to turn to Mrs. Diana. Um, South-South cooperation entails the use of public resources, human resources, and financial resources. As a major provider of technical assistance, how does the government of Indonesia ensure transparency and accountability in the use of these resources? I'm, 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 so, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning a Mrs. Diana, but it will be a mister speaking on behalf of Mrs. De Diana. Thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. So, yeah, <clears throat> allow me to apologize uh, my boss, uh, Ms. Diani, because uh, she has to give intervention in the HLPF. So she asked me to represent him in this uh, very 
important meeting. So my name is Prianto, uh, Prianto Romatullah. I'm working for uh, Ministry of National Development Planning, uh, Bapenas, Indonesia. So uh, first of all, thank you for having me on this uh, meeting. And <clears throat> to address your, your uh, question, I would like to uh, start with uh, our position in, in last uh, conference in Argentina. At the BAPA Plus 40 uh, conference in Indonesia, convey that the effectiveness of uh, global development cooperation need to be improved by creating ecosystem that support the involvement of uh, southern countries that have uh, useful uh, knowledge and experience for other countries. As an emerging uh, provider in Indonesia uh, continues to strengthen the national uh, policy architecture to promote a strong and uh, sustained development cooperation under the South-South and Triangle Cooperation Framework. Moreover, optimizing the international development cooperation, including the South-South co and Triangle Cooperation, is a priority in, the, in, in, in our national development planning. And in to do so, uh, the government of Indonesia uh, now is attempting to ensure uh, the transparency and accountability uh, has in place. First, uh, as, as a part of the planning system, uh, we conduct the uh, interline ministry consultation for the South-South uh, cooperation program. The consultation now is being expanded uh, since we committed to the SDGs uh, indicators. Um, the government has uh, launched the multi stakeholder uh, partnership uh, guidelines. I think this is uh, uh, the first one in the uh, Southeast Asia region. And we just launched the, MMS, the MSV guidelines uh, for the development process, um, which is uh, involved, involved the, 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 the various stakeholders uh, both in the national uh, level or and and the uh, subnational level. So the second one, we conducts the quarterly uh, monitoring meeting with the relevant uh, stakeholders accord, according to the uh, its subjects. And now we also uh, involve the non-state actors uh, for this uh, consultation and and monitoring uh, process because. Now uh, we think that uh, it's very important to in, to in engage with the uh, uh, non-state actors such as uh, CSO and the uh, private sector, and we also publish the uh, annual report for the South South uh, program in Indonesia. And moreover, uh, for the effectiveness of the South South cooperation uh, program. We uh, uh, include this uh, South South cooperation program in our uh, uh, what we call the uh, planning and budgeting system. So this is very uh, reform uh, uh, program in Indonesia because uh, previously uh, we are not so think much about the the result based approach. Now, uh, since we have a, a, a very significant uh, reform in the context of the uh, planning process, development planning process, now uh, we uh, make a lot of uh, strict and clear uh, indicators how to measure the effectiveness of the, the each program, including the South-South cooperation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, on behalf of Mrs. Diana from Indonesia, just giving us a practical example of South-South cooperation in, in Indonesia in terms of putting together national structures, issues around you know, national ownership, issues around accountability and transparency and you know, a stakeholder participation. Um, I would like to turn my mic to uh, uh, Mr. Noel Gonzalez. Um, please tell us about the Mexican uh, pilot to monitor the effectiveness of its cooperation. Why, do you, why did you decide to do this? 
um, how has this experience led to tangible results? Uh, what, ca can you also share with us some of the lessons that can be drawn from your experiences, the strengths of monitoring, uh, the strengths of the monitoring exercise, and what elements uh, can can be improved? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, allow me to uh, thank you, uh, Madam Moderator, and on behalf of the. Uh, director, executive director of the Mexican Agency for International Development Cooperation to thank you all for the interest and, the, and your time for being here. Mexico is a country that has been committed to the development effectiveness agenda for a while. We think that the principles for, uh, of development effectiveness um, which are, as we all know, the results-based uh, planning, the uh, ownership of uh, recipient countries, uh, aiming at results, transparency and accountability, and multi-stakeholder partnerships do apply to what we do. We, we are convinced, and of course we are part as well and very much aware of the debate and the different perspectives that uh, Jorge mentioned before, but we are actually aiming at making uh, our South-South cooperation more uh, to increase its impact, to increase its development results. And that, uh, in that direction, in that sense, we thought that uh, participating, and we think and we are convinced that participating in the global partnership is a, a, a solution that can provide us with, um, with good examples, with good uh, practices that we can all uh, as well replicate. So what we decided was to go a little bit beyond the debate, the political debate, and actually take a look at how can we apply and implement these principles on development effectiveness in the South-South uh, cooperation that we do. And we indeed believe that South-South cooperation is different from traditional uh, development cooperation, from North-South cooperation. It has a different dynamic, it has different tools, it has different uh, mechanisms to be implemented so that we agree that it cannot be uh, equal, it cannot use the same uh, parameters. So we decided to actually take a look at how to develop these parameters which are specific not to South-South cooperation in general, but to the South-South cooperation that we do in Mexico, uh, which is basically a middle-income country in Latin America, which is one of the regions which is most active in, uh, these, uh, in, the, in these uh, kind of exchanges. Um, of course, this response to paragraph 11 of the BAPA Outcome Conference, but also this is a conversation that has been going on for a while. In paragraph 18 of, of the Nairobi uh, Outcome Document, it was mentioned as well. And of course, we all, always get to these commitments. But basically, what we did was that with the support of the, of the Global Partnership Joint Support Team, uh, particularly uh, Ms. Piper Hart, who is over there, who helped us to develop the indicators that we actually used to measure and uh, monitor the uh, way that we are uh, implementing these development effectiveness principles. We undertook a, a, a broad consultation, uh, including more than 100 stakeholders nationally wise. We did an online consultation, then we had a couple of days workshop, and we were refining this, uh, this document that we, you, you, you have it in front of you. If you are interested, we have several copies that we can, and we can also direct you to the electronic version. We basically, long story short, we have advanced in Mexico and that was evident through the consultation with stakeholders in the institutionalization of our South-South cooperation, but there are many, uh, many areas of opportunity for uh, institutionalizing, institutionalizing, for uh, budgeting better, for following up, for monitoring and evaluating. You can read the results uh, here. But basically, our, our main, let's say at this stage, it is very important that we are having this conversation here in the United Nations. At the end, this is the house where we all need to, to get together and agree on, upon these issues. And uh, we are putting these instruments uh, to the, uh, on the table for Others, I am sure that the, that the joint support team would be happy to collaborate if others are interested in going in the same, in the same direction. Of course, always putting the specific characteristics of each of South-South cooperation, but moreover, of each country's different type and style of South-South cooperation on the table 
in order to see if we can get some common ground that allows us to advance better in having more development impact overall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. In terms of sharing that practical example uh, from Mexico, moving from semantic and speeches and boardroom, uh, you know, uh, intervention to really uh, getting our hands dirty. And I, I would recommend for all of us to read the report if you are actually interested in, in a practical implementation of, of South-South cooperation and how national ownership uh, has been considered in terms of, you know, uh, coming up with indicators to measure the progress that actually speaks to the country specifics or to the uh, development cooperation specifics. Um, in the morning, there has been a lot of discussions around the shrinking space of civil society engagement, not only in development cooperation, but around issues of, uh, you know, development, uh, not only in the south, but also uh, in, in the north. Um, on my panel today, I have Marita Gonzalez, uh, who is uh, uh, one of the co-chairs of, of uh, CPD. Uh, from your perspective, what is the role of civil societies in South-South cooperation decisions and implementation? What are the greatest challenge to civil society living up to this role? And how can this stakeholder engagement uh, most effectively? Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to put on your headsets. Thank you very much. What you see on the screen is uh, somehow from the uh, Global Partnership uh, for effective development uh, cooperation. We give examples of the South-South and uh, triangular cooperation. We have a report from 2016 and a second report of 2018 where we focus on the individuals and the approach uh, based on rights. You will see at the center one of the publications that is an observatory of uh, civil society organization in Colombia monitoring on all Latin in American countries uh, on uh, how cooperation takes place. We do research on how the states cooperate in uh, particular cases as their BRICS or the infrastructure in China, but we are very interested in the cooperation that is horizontal, in particular with civil societies organization. A particular case, well, I come from Argentina, a known case is the horizontal cooperation in Mercosur. If, to develop a um, labor and a corporations agreement in which uh, we've been able to cooperate with less developed states such as uh, Paraguay, the added value is linked to what has set forth as an example. The social dialogue is one of the most important impacts for cooperation and the participation of civil society. The South-South cooperation has an important added value to make it horizontal, the values of solidarity. And amongst them, one of the most important things for the civil society is the enrootment we have in the communities and the social factors, also the possibility of access to public information that gives us transparency and, in particular, citizens' participation. And more important, in order to reduce the anti-discriminatory uh, or the discriminatory practices at the strong participation of civil society. Likewise, the involvement of the most vulnerable sectors, in particular children and women. One of the effects as a civil society we assess and monitor through results and as has been previously said, the differences between the South-South cooperation and 
the traditional cooperation. And one of the most important uh, impacts is that we eradicate the anti-colonial uh, impacts of the South-South cooperation. For us, the most important thing is that cooperation be based on individuals and rights. When we do monitoring, we do it in particular with qualitative elements. We consult on how the surveys have been to different uh, actors, uh, the youth, women, workers, uh, indigenous peoples, uh, disabled people. We do consultations uh, that are not structured, but more in-depth on how their life has changed. For us, the most important thing is that the South-South cooperation is based on uh, the rights and that it actually changes the life of individuals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Marita, for bringing uh, the civil society's voice to this discussion on South-South uh, cooperation. Um, I would like to turn to uh, Professor um, in, in the morning, there were some statistics that were shown in terms of, uh, of the Global South and uh, their participation in research and development or investment in research and development with regards to science and technology. And uh, you, you could see from, from, from that particular picture, the South is, is not actually really investing in research and development, and if, if it's re investing in research and, and development, it's, it's actually a very, a very small uh, uh, percentage, or it's just a drop in the water. Um, in, in addition to, to that uh, gleam picture that was painted in the morning, uh, could you please uh, uh, share with us in the BAPA 40 outcome document, there is a global recognition that ensuring effectiveness in South-South cooperation is vital. From your perspective, what are the key considerations to take into account when developing approaches to monitor South-South cooperation effectiveness? Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam Moderator. Uh, you have placed the context absolutely right in terms of how do we go forward with the idea of uh, effectiveness in context of South-South uh, uh, cooperation. And BAPA Plus 40, as uh, Jorge very rightly explained, gives us the backdrop within which we should view South-South cooperation from the uh, glasses that we have here in GPEDC in terms of uh, effectiveness. I think uh, uh, the whole success of South-South cooperation actually lies with its efficiency. And that uh, is different from the idea of, uh, of effectiveness that uh, OECD has been talking about with the idea that uh, North-South or South-South cooperation should move forward. So if you look at the uh, uh, the features of this idea of efficiency, it brings in uh, low cost delivery, it brings in less time for delivery, it brings in the local connect, and finally it brings in the appropriate technology that the partner countries require. And that's the effectiveness, that's the idea of efficiency. So if we are moving towards the uh, framework as uh, BAPA Plus 40 gives us, it gives us the context for triangular cooperation. So any uh, convergence would require this matching of uh, effectiveness with efficiency. And that's where we see the uh, uh, historical evolution of the triangular cooperation, whether practiced by Japan or practiced by Germany and, and as, as provider country and by South Africa and uh, Brazil as pivot countries. Noel has very rightly mentioned the, the framework and now more and more countries are, uh, uh, are coming forward with the idea of uh, assessment frameworks. In fact, uh, my own institution has launched a publication called Development Cooperation Review. Uh, we are carrying a couple of copies with us where we are encouraging South to have their own monitoring mechanisms uh, and, and not to be influenced by OECD frameworks alone. But now we have moved forward and the uh, idea of North-South or South-South, those kind of compartmentalizations would not work and we would have to see how we go 
forward with efficiency given the kind of resource constraint. The last point that I want to mention is in terms of uh, re-exploring the modalities. The OECD uh, idea of effectiveness comes in with the grant, while the idea of South-South cooperation comes in with convergence of modalities. So uh, all the five modalities that uh, South-South cooperation comes in, whether it is grant, it is concessional finance, it is technology transfer, it's capacity building, it comes in with, with convergence. So you find more and more projects being given within South-South cooperation have all these five modalities coming as one, which we are calling as development compact. So, so efficiency and development compact are the ways which, uh, in a way, effectively uh, respond to the OECD idea of effectiveness. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor. I hope you came with enough uh, copies for us mm -hmm. to uh, carry on, or you can share with us a link. Um, uh, before I move to uh, my next uh, speaker, it's, it's, it's really interesting how uh, the discussions are actually linking to each other from, from uh, the Indonesian experience and the Mexican experience and then also what Professor is actually stressing the need uh, to encourage you know, us from the South to actually come up with our own monitoring tools. And it, you know, Mexico is actually leading by example in terms of uh, uh, country participation and national specific uh, uh, development of, of, of indicators and measuring indicators for, for that case. Um, on, on my list, next on my list is uh, Mr. Enrique. Uh, could you please give us uh, an example of how cooperation is provided by Chile? What tools or systems are used to ensure effective delivery of South-South cooperation? And how does Chile ensure effectiveness when receiving cooperation from uh, uh, Southern providers? Thank you. Thank you very much um, for inviting me, and Chile, of course. Um, um, a lot of what has been said, uh, I, I share a lot of what has been said. Uh, so I would like to emphasize maybe two or three aspects where uh, the South-South cooperation that the government of Chile does, um, uh, we think uh, are interesting to, to you. And one of them uh, is that we think we meet some of the internationally agreed um, um, uh, guidelines for effective uh, triangular cooperation and South-South uh, cooperation. Um, we think that ownership, of course, is uh, one of the most important thing, and our program is demand-driven. Um, at the same time, uh, we have focused uh, more and more on uh, l larger scale project. We think that uh, we used to, we've been doing South-South cooperation for some 25 years and, uh, and triangular, and, and the truth is that we have um, uh, suffered a little bit of a fragmented uh, cooperation. So we are focusing now, um, together with all our partners, um, in, 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 in larger projects. We are trying also to, um, to include more and more um, the private sector and the civil society. One concrete example, which was the question, is a fund, a Chile fund against poverty and ho ho hunger and poverty. That's the name, the long name, Chile fund, we know it. And that's a fund that um, it has three, three lines. Our, uh, it's um, a public call and th there is a line of work for approval of projects for uh, governments, public sector, but also for the civil society in general from the whole region, and, uh, and one third component for humanitarian aid. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, tried to uh, work more and more with innovative tools, um, for example, other funds, um, joint funds, funds uh, together with Mexico, Mexico-Chile or Chile-Mexico fund. It has been, has been going on for more than 10 years and it's, uh, um, uh, I think, an interesting um, uh, modality of South-South cooperation, which also does triangular cooperation. And we have, with some of the traditional donors, also joint funds to work in third countries um, that demand it, of course. At the same time, we are trying to um, stimulate the exchange of, of, of um, 
of uh, persons, technicians uh, from all the countries, especially in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean, since it's the region where we are more concentrated in our South-South and Triangular cooperation, to uh, exchange of, of, of people uh, in our agencies, between our agencies. We are doing it with Brazil, and we have been doing it from, uh, with other countries too. And finally, we think it's very important to uh, work with all the regions in the world. And that's why we have uh, um, widened our South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation to, for example, uh, the ASEAN countries. We are working since eight years uh, together with Singapore in international courses for members of the 10 countries in ASEAN. And we have recently uh, started a cooperation with Thailand, also in benefit of the countries of ASEAN. And that's, those same courses are being imparted with teachers from Singapore and Thailand in Chile for the CARICOM, for the Caribbean. So we are really doing horizontal cooperation and triangular cooperation at the same time. So there is a certain convergence of modalities as, uh, as we heard uh, recently. I think I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Enrique, for sharing the, the Chilean e uh, experience. Um, I think we have uh, just some little time uh, for for some floor interventions, and to kick off the interventions, I'll open the floor from uh, a comrade. From please, uh, I'm a trade union, so don't feel offended when I call you comrade. <laughs> uh, comrade from El El Salvador, who had quietly asked to be uh, the first in terms of uh, opening up uh, the floor, um, and I will give you a minute, please. And could I also? I sh see a show of hands, how many w <laughs> would like to speak. Mm -hmm. So I will start from my right, going to my, uh, we have the gent uh, my comrade from El Salvador, then my gentleman and you. Okay. One minute, please, so that we can uh, leave uh, the rest to also say something. Well, you will uh, forgive me, I will speak in Spanish. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. I am Edgar Hueso, Subdirector General for Cooperation in Development from the Chancellery of El Salvador. I thank you for all the participants and the global partnership for effective cooperation. Our country sees as very relevant this uh, very interesting topic in regards to South, South and Triangular cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, which is the uh, effectiveness of cooperation in El Salvador has been in the last 10 years uh, supporting the uh, inclusion for South Southern Triangle Corporation, some of the principles that we know part of the international efficiency agenda. And uh, as was said this morning, we think they are more relevant now that they have been explicit, explained in the final uh, text of the second space in the high level forum for uh, cooperation, the uh, BAPA plus 40. And uh, in regards to this uh, topic, the proposal of the five working pillars. The first one, policies and positioning. Second one, regarding uh, technical work cooperation. Third, financial. Uh, the fourth pillar is visibility and registry of South South Cooperation. And the fifth, look impact for impactful, impactful indicators in regards to South South Cooperation. Uh, and exactly, uh, that's exactly what we've, we've done uh, to include an, uh, an efficacious and effective cooperation for development. We've included the renovation of our national efficiency agenda and also our dialogue with the private sector and 
I want to make available to you our model for efficiency in South South Corporation, especially our South South and Trangar Corporation fund FOSAL, which is being shared with many countries in South America. And now that we are pro tempore uh, in the uh, cooperation, inter American cooperation system, we want to do this at a sub regional level. We want to thank Mexico also for their uh, contributions to Triangular and South South Corporation. We think it's very very relevant, uh, your efforts are very relevant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, El Salvador, for adding a more rich experience on practical example of South South Cooperation. I would invite uh, Aguentina and then the gentleman at Nepal. Okay. Yes, very, thank you very much. I, I believe that this session uh, makes us think about a, a, an efficient cooperation, South-South cooperation, and after um, Argentina was the country that hosted uh, the BAPA plus 40, we think it's pertinent. Uh, we had a lot of dialogue with the uh, Office of South South Corporation under the direction of Mr. Chediek, uh, speaking about how to follow up on the post BAPA process and also the efficiency of South South Corporation is one of the largest topics. We think Papa Plus 40 uh, focused on this topic in a very important way, much more important than it was done in Nairobi. So this was an advancement. And it is a window of opportunity, it's not a doubt, to initiate a dialogue to come out with tools uh, so that we can go uh, to a South perspective cooperation. We have a high committee. Uh, a high-level committee for South-South cooperation, and we believe that this is a process that can advance and uh, happen under the umbrella of the UN, but also within the high-level committee for South-South uh, cooperation. Thank you. All the presenters, uh, speakers, for very much valuable uh, opinion, and especially the country country specific experiences. So, as we all agree that uh, the South South cooperations is 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 very much effective, that rightly captures the local issues, the regional issues, and it is very much tailored, and and then customized as per the the local uh, requirements, and uh, it's. It can be a tool for effective uh, uh, cooperations, economic cooperations, and in terms of uh, achieving the development results, and also the uh, the, the principle of uh, effectiveness. So then, then why not we, we we streamline the experiences that has been come up, the best practices that has been come up, and the the, the really the the architectures, the 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 way that we are utilizing the south south cooperations with the some of the fast growing economies in, in, in the south they they have a very good schemes uh, supports to the to the neighbor countries to the region region and maybe the the some beyond the region as well so why not we streamline it and so that uh, the OECD prescriptions that we, I, as I say, uh, would like to say is uh, why we not, I think, really streamline it and uh, learn the OECD even reversely learn with the, with the, from the South-South cooperations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm the Dr. Fanner from Nigeria. I just want to underscore the importance of salsa cooperation, particularly with respect to a sort of um, innovation that provides alternative funding for SDGs. And uh, I want to leverage uh, the statement made by Mexico, particularly on the indicator for monitoring I mean, developing indicator for SASA cooperation and uh, development cooperation. Is it not uh, possible for us to encourage adding an uh, indicator on SASA cooperation for development in the uh, GPDC indicator? You know, 
when we look at uh, the reporting, I mean, the, the, the behavior of the actors when we were doing the monitoring round, we will see that uh, there is need for us to encourage improvement in reporting, such that uh, a lot of things are going on that are actually that uh, SASA Corporation is actually facilitating. Almost all partners, both bilateral and multilateral agencies, are using SASA Corporation to support projects and programs that has to do with uh, achieving uh, Agenda 2030. And also, even in the humanitarian setting, you see that SASA Corporation has been played a pivotal role, and I can see that uh, having indicator that we, I mean, adding uh, SASA indicator to monitoring development effectiveness will be very good for the next round of monitoring. Thank you very much. We, we are really running out of time, so I will take the two gentlemen here because their hand have been, I'm being accused of uh, gender inequality. So I will take the two gentlemen and one lady. Yeah, the lady at the back. Right. One um, half a minute each, please. Thank you, Madam Gen uh, Moderator. I would like to thank you to all the panelists for bringing very important uh, conversation discussion to the forum. Uh, I, I recently have been looking at actually South South Corporation could be kind of alternative or addition to the existing framework, traditionally led by North and developed countries. And giving that thought to that uh, the framework, and actually I'm very interested, fascinated by the idea uh, that the efficiency is slightly different than effectiveness, and focusing on the eff efficiency as an alternative to the effectiveness discussion. Uh, so actually, I would like to ask that is that really the right direction, or is it is it really a comprehensive approach? Usually, efficiency discourse usually led by developed countries to save money and cost saving, maybe efficiency is part of a cost saving or maybe economic uh, discourse. But could be efficiency could be differently uh, defined. But I'm just very interested in why the efficiency could be alternative or addition to the existing effectiveness. Usually effectiveness is more like a goal approach to result-driven, evidence-based. So I'm just wondering this course, how this is the opposite direction or the addition or comprehension uh, of that existing uh, discourse led by North. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Yim Nam from the Chief. All right, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Mr. Yum Nam from the CPDE, uh, CEO's of Partnership for Development and Effectiveness. I just want to help us come up with a small comment on the triangular cooperation. I think it's really good to see what's happening within uh, some of the concrete sub-regional and uh, sub-country in the sub-national uh, context as to how some of the triangular cooperation focusing on energy and infrastructure, for example. And then I was referring to, uh, just wanted to recall the uh, specific case mentioning about how countries like Japan and Germany are involved, you know, and then I think there are issues around the inclusivity on the involvement of the marginalized communities like the indigenous communities uh, when it comes to this specific uh, process like energy or sectors like energy or infrastructure and also when it comes to the technical assistance there are also concerns around the focus on private sector, you know, I didn't you know, when it comes to the private sector uh, and in sectors like energy and uh, infrastructure, there are also challenges with uh, the issues around human rights and, uh, you know, the impact, uh, community rights violation. And uh, so how do we ensure that there is uh, uh, a regulatory and accountability mechanism for uh, the private sector? And uh, finally, I think it's really important for countries like Japan and Germany or others, you know, who are involved in triangular cooperation to also uphold the development effectiveness agenda. Uh, when it, uh, you know, involvement in the triangular cooperation. And uh, with that, finally, I, I feel that uh, there has to be greater involvement of civil societies uh, in the formulation of uh, triangular cooperation in the agendas and also to ensure the accountability of uh, the private sector. And along with that, uh, f you know, to ensure that um, there is strong uh, human rights, uh, you know, alignment to, to this initiative. So thank you very much. Thank you, moderator. My uh, intervention is directed to the UN Office for South-South Cooperation. I just wanted to, to know how you view the issue of South-South Cooperation uh, within the African continent, so cooperation within the continent, 
and possibly to find out what kind of support that could be there, possibly from your office and, and the others, in terms of promoting uh, cooperation within the African context, so exchange of experience and exchange of knowledge within the African continent. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really, really, really sorry because you are running out of time, but I would like to give my panelists each half a minute. Mm -hmm. Some of you have received very tough questions from Professor in terms of effectiveness and efficiency uh, to, to UN in terms of South-South cooperation within Africa and what kind of support uh, they can receive. Uh, to looking at you know streamlining best practices uh, because there's so much that is there to be shared can we you know have more of these sessions in terms of sharing i don't think we've given it the due process in less than one hour there's so much that um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting from, from, from the ground. So I'll start from my right, going to my left, and in your half a minute, I would just like to pose the question, what next after New York, in terms of South-South cooperation? One element is to strengthen the capacity of countries to do South-South cooperation. By definition, countries of the South have institutional weaknesses, and also it's difficult politically to mobilize committing resources to collaborate with others when the countries of the South, by definition, also have significant developmental issues. We're going to work with Africa on that. Secondly, to have better knowledge of what is available, and our office is working with many organizations of the UN system and other partners in developing a mechanism well beyond a, a, a web page to create a marketplace for the exchange of ideas. And also we are working with other partners to mobilize resources to get more South-South and Triangular cooperation going. That tries to answer the question from the lady from Africa, and we are strongly committed to the continent, and we have a small office in Addis Ababa, which we hope will expand in the next few years. Yeah, I think I think uh, South South cooperation can go along with the economic cooperation. Indeed, uh, they can support each other. So that's why um, <clears throat> Indonesia is trying to to make a balance uh, between the South South cooperation and and the uh, other uh, development cooperation uh, scheme, uh, which is uh, you know can can make uh, both <coughs> sides uh, get benefit. Uh, uh, and and make uh, sustain the the cooperation um, in in the context of the uh, uh, development cooperation uh, we also try to expand our uh, sector now uh, Indonesia also working on the uh, environmental issue such as uh, how to uh, manage the marine debris in the uh, uh, ocean thank you so in half a minute, first, we are uh, going to be using this, uh, the result of this exercise nationally wise to develop our national development cooperation strategy for the uh, rest of the Mexican current administration. So from 1920, uh, from 2020, I'm sorry, for, uh, to uh, 2024. So this exercise will, in, will actually be very useful and it will have very concrete and practical results. And uh, just a second to uh, say that I agree that we need to develop as southern uh, providers or partners for uh, development cooperation common and uh, common standards and parameters to assess and to promote the development uh, effectiveness of what we do. Uh, there are, uh, in this panel, there were a lot of very interesting ex examples on national experiences in this, uh, in this regard, as well as our colleagues from the, from the floor. I guess that uh, this uh, is an exercise that should be taken on board in the process of the uh, follow-up to, to, to the BAPA uh, conference. I guess that the, the good work that has been undertaken uh, by, the, by the joint support team of the Global Partnership along with us and the Global Partnership itself can uh, be of use uh, to fuel these discussions, but I guess that the main, uh, the main 
place, the main venue for these discussions to take place is actually the UN in the high level uh, committee for South-South cooperation. So we encourage uh, cooperation basically among all the stakeholders to advance in this regard. Thank you. Well, one of the topics that uh, I was left to talk about what was debated in between the panelists and also the interventions from the floor is the subject of indicators and standards to measure South South cooperation. And you, indeed, you can ask yourself in which measure this cooperation is really being a result of what are the historical principles of South South cooperation. And we have the first indicators first, which in which measure South South cooperation allows for self determinations and sovereignty. Second, in which measure does it uh, happen uh, with conditions or not condi or not enough conditions for economic development for the countries receiving the cooperation and if there is a uh, solidarity and equal partnership if uh, the stakeholders see themselves as equal and uh, results in what measure do we see the building of solidarity links that was uh, the fundamental topics of uh, BAPA plus 40 and BAPA and that is the involvement of civil society also we spoke about uh, the accountability of the private sector especially and I think is one of the most important things that we need to discover in regards to South South cooperation and in the end we spoke about lack of institutionality and we have to also ask ourselves not only country and country by country cooperation but also regional blocks because regional integration is very important for our country uh, thank you very much uh, thank you. I think uh, uh, three issues have come up quite well. Uh, one is in terms of uh, efficiency versus effectiveness way. Uh, we are trying to see how uh, we can go beyond uh, uh, solidarity and uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, political commitment alone within the framework of South-South cooperation. And as we heard uh, uh, MXID, we heard uh, uh, Chile, and we also heard Indonesia, uh, Argentina. They give us uh, a sort of uh, role models in terms of how convergence of South-South cooperation assessment frameworks is possible. And that assessment framework can uh, bring in the dimensions of uh, uh, countries which are growing fast, which are uh, uh, able to spare more resources, and have their own endogenous domestic development model to share uh, with the uh, fellow developing countries. And, and uh, uh, at my institute, we have been taking that up for the last five years. Uh, on 22nd, 23rd of August, we are uh, holding the fifth conference in that series uh, in New Delhi uh, to discuss this uh, uh, idea and the compatibility of OECD's uh, uh, effectiveness vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh uh, South-South cooperations, efficiency-based cooperation. Thank you. In, in the case of, of Chile, we, we will continue doing South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. We just have to be more efficient in those aspects where we are lacking still um, efficiency. Um, um, I would mention two of them. Um, we would like to, um, and certainly Mexico's uh, pilot monitoring will help us a lot. We are, will review it carefully because we, we are not uh, in doing monitoring evaluation of our South-South cooperation. And when we do it in triangular cooperation is together with the, uh, with the partner. Um, that's one point where we need to get better and more efficient. And the other is um, that we would like to have a whole of government approach to South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. And um, to be better on that, we are, we are uh, establishing, we are doing an information system for international cooperation together with Costa Rica, Panama and the IDB. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful panel. I would not even try to summarize <laughs> what, what the panelists and the discussions that have, uh, have gone on on the floor. But just, you know, taking home uh, in terms of South-South uh, uh, cooperation, I think we agree to it that it's looking at the four pillars of effectiveness development. There has been discussions around national ownership 
with regards to South South uh, cooperation around focusing on results. There has been a lot of talk around efficiency, but moving forward is looking at how can we improve on the efficiency. There has been also a lot of you know experience sharing around. Um, inclusive partnership in terms of stakeholders, participation, the civil society, the trade union, private sector, and other relevant stakeholders, and also a lot of discussions around uh, transparency and accountability. So in terms of moving forward, how do we continue to strengthen our capacity to actually ensure that South-South cooperation is actually uh, strengthen. I think that's one of uh, the issues that I would, I would take home, but also ensuring around right-based, they have talked about youth and women uh, involvement and how do we ensure that uh, we bring them on board. But also, you know, moving forward, and probably Piper would also help us on this in terms of developing uh, common standards of, you know, and parameters in South-South cooperation that my comrade from Nigeria has also so, uh, raised an issue, how do we ensure that these standards and, and parameters are actually s uh, mainstreamed within the GPCD, uh, 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 the Global uh, Partnership Effectiveness Cooperation Framework? How do we bring these parameters within the mainstream uh, framework? But also not forgetting about issues around research and development. And research and development is with regards to collecting all the rich, you know, experiences that are there on the ground and, and sharing with, with the rest of the people. So I would like to say thank you. The discussions do not end here. We have to continue sharing. We have to continue working together on South-South cooperation. I come from, from East Africa and for Kenya, and for me this is actually uh, something that we also need to follow up in terms of working together as comrades from the South. Thank you.
aquí, okay, porque te va a tocar del next turn. Sí. Ok. going to turn on automatically. No, I got it. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon to the, uh, everyone. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes. Bienvenue à notre session uh, de cet après-midi. Uh, for those of you I haven't be welcome to our session this afternoon for the people who haven't met me yesterday. Je suis at Global Affairs Canada and I am delighted to be able to uh, to this session on triangular cooperation this afternoon. On behalf of my colleague uh, Noel Gonzalez, uh, Canada and Mexico have been true partners and collaborators in trying to advance the issue of triangular cooperation along with the core group of colleagues working on the Global Partnership Initiative on Effective Triangular Cooperation. 
So just by way of perhaps a little bit of an introduction um, before I hand things over to Noel, I think it's been clear and certainly over the conversations that we've had so far this morning that our global ambition, our shared ambition to eradicate poverty frankly isn't going to succeed if we pursue business as usual approaches. Um, and we need new ideas, inclusive collaborations, innovative ideas that are really going to change the nature of uh, the discussion and enable us to fulfill the ambitious agenda that we set out for ourselves in Agenda 2030. And triangular cooperation provides us in this respect with a very interesting modality for advancing that kind of innovative approach. Triangular cooperation is a growing and transformative modality. Uh, it can help us accelerate the implementation of the agenda. We can build on comparative strengths of the partners that are coming together within that partnership uh, effort. We can be adaptive and flexible uh, depending on the value proposition that each one of us might bring to the table. Um, and I think that's what's really interesting about the work that the GPI and the GPEDC has been doing in this context, not least trying to bring forward a more modernized definition of what we mean by triangular cooperation. And that really means looking at it holistically, that there's a whole new range of partners and collaborators that come to the table than has been the case in the past. The, the new definition, the kind of modernized definition of triangular cooperation really makes that emphasis on the importance of multi-stakeholder approaches. Uh, what does that mean uh, when we don't just talk about a kind of rigid geometric collaboration of donor, emerging donor and recipient. That's, that's the 20th century. That's not where we are now and today in how we want to deliver our uh, collective efforts towards sustainable development. And so the GPEI on effective triangular cooperation has really tried to create this dynamic model which complements South-South cooperation and complements efforts at what used to be referred to as North-South cooperation. It recognizes really that all partners benefit from development cooperation when we share our knowledge together, when we share our experiences, when we look at how we can build capacity, and it's capacity, frankly, that get, gets built in a two to three to four way uh, means, and when we focus collectively on how we can obtain shared results. Um, we're convinced that development actors can work together um, to co-create and to innovate in this space, that we can take take intelligent risks uh, as we pursue these new kinds of collaborations uh, with a triangular model, that we can pursue evidence-based policy and programming, that we can uh, pursue innovative technological solutions, and we can make sure that our approaches are uh, locally driven and adapted to local circumstances. So in this context, the GPI has developed a set of voluntary guidelines uh, on effective triangular cooperation to ensure that our triangular efforts are really grounded in the effectiveness agenda. The guidelines were created through a transparent and inclusive process, I think something we've heard a lot about so far uh, today in the discussions, and it was done through multiple rounds of engagement with a broad range of stakeholders, governments, uh, including the largest bilateral donors and least developed country partners, global, national and local civil society, international organizations and members of the private sector. So I encourage all of you, if you haven't already had the opportunity, to review, internalize, uh, and hopefully endorse the voluntary guidelines, uh, incorporate them into your work uh, from design through to delivery, through the evaluation of the results and impact that you are achieving uh, as you look at advancing the sustainable development goals. So with that brief introduction, I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Noel Gonzalez, who's the Director General for Planning and Development Cooperation Policies at the Mexican Agency for International Development Cooperation. Noel. Muchísimas eh, gracias. Voy a hablar. Thank you very much. I'm going to speak Spanish, uh, taking the opportunity that we have uh, simultaneous interpretation. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, first of all, to thank uh, Canada greatly for the joint uh, work we've uh, done. I would like to recognize the work uh, we've been doing in the framework of this initiative of the Global Partnership together with Japan, Peru, the Ibero-American program uh, for the strengthening of the South-South 
Health Cooperation Chile, who recently joined the program, and other actors. I hope I'm not leaving anyone on the side. The Islamic Development Bank that has been key for the development of the initiative. When we proposed together with Canada this initiative, it was in the framework of the Nairobi meeting for the uh, effective cooperation uh, during the second meeting of the Global Partnership. We are at a moment in which, uh, in which the architecture of international cooperation should help that all countries put on the table what we can contribute with the added value we have in terms of knowledge, financial resources, human resources, technical resources, and we work jointly in order to reach our common uh, development goals. I don't have anything else to add to the excellent explanation made by Mrs. Goldberg on the initiative, but I would like to put at your consideration an example of how this joint uh, collaboration work can be useful for all of us. Mexico is now, as a priority, implementing a plan for the comprehensive development of the uh, region of the south of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador in order to confront one of the most difficult challenges we're facing now, that is forced migration. Obviously, the situation uh, related with uh, lack of development opportunities at a local level many times linked with a drought that is also related with uh, climate change patterns and, and climate change in general. This forces us to rethink the development and the style of development we are promoting to go beyond looking for economic development per se and uh, to see how to contribute so that the growth happens in a framework of justice, inclusion, generating opportunities for development, obviously in line with the vision and the philosophy of the uh, 2030 development agenda and the SDGs. Uh, that is the main message I would like to put on the table. In order to be able to reach our objectives and progress jointly, we will only be able to do it effectively and we do it together. And the Triangular cooperation is undoubtedly an instrument that can be central to reach these objectives. I wanted to put these elements on the table today so that they are considered an example of what we can reach if we actually work together and we put our political will and our resources on the table. And with that, before we start the panel discussion and uh, giving uh, the control of the panel to our moderator, our dear Anna Schutte colleague from Argentina. I want to uh, show you a video sponsored by the Islamic Development Bank to show you what is uh, the objective of this uh, global partnership. Thank you very much. Triangular Cooperation a global partnership initiative. The triangle is the strongest, most stable shape there is. From the Egyptian pyramids to the intricate structure of geodesic domes, triangles have been integral to many advances in human engineering. And now they're at the heart of a brand new enterprise, the Global Partnership Initiative on Effective Triangular Cooperation led by a core group composed of Canada, the Islamic Development Bank, Japan, Mexico, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation. Triangular cooperation is a game-changing way for countries and organizations to work together in groups of three or more, overcoming challenges and driving development so that all of them benefit. It's a highly effective form of collaboration, of bringing people out of poverty, and it's on the rise. Here's how triangular cooperation works. Three or more countries or organizations come together to address a particular development issue that one of them is facing. The facilitator helps connect the partners together, giving financial and technical support to the collaboration. The pivotal partner often has proven experience tackling the issue at hand 
and shares its resources, knowledge and expertise to help others do the same. The beneficiary is the target for the development and is responsible for ensuring that resources are allocated effectively and that results are sustainable. With roles shared in this way, and with knowledge, benefits and communication flowing between all partners, these collaborations are incredibly robust and can bring about real change. They enable South-South and North-South cooperation to happen in innovative ways, with project partners forming strong bonds and building relationships as they reach across borders to help each other grow. We see huge potential in triangular cooperation, and we're not alone. The Global Partnership Initiative on Effective Triangular Cooperation has already been joined by development organizations, academic institutions, and civil society organizations from five continents. These members are exploring the potential of multi-stakeholder cooperation in three different areas. Advocacy, establishing a definition and a set of voluntary principles. Analytical, collecting and analyzing real-world case studies in order to understand all possible applications of triangular cooperation. And operational, creating a space to share lessons and challenges to support participants in future projects. To learn more about triangular cooperation, and to find out how you could join this unique global platform and benefit from a triangular partnership, please contact one of the core members of the Global Partnership Initiative on Effective Triangular Cooperation. Effective Triangular Cooperation – The Future of Collaborative Development Bueno, buenas tardes a todos. Well, good afternoon to all of you. The first thing uh, that I'm going to say is uh, we have a little time. Um, Ana Ciuti, the General Director of International Cooperation of Argentina, and one of the ones responsible who worked in the organization of uh, the uh, Papa Plus 40. I'm here in the program of the strengthening of the South-South cooperation representing an Ibero-American region of 22 countries that undoubtedly is a region between Latin America, Spain, Portugal, and Andorra leads the implementation and the strengthening of the triangular cooperation, and it is as a region part of the GPI, the Global Partnership. I would like to mention paragraph number 28 of the text of the Action Plan of Buenos Aires. This paragraph refers to definition of the concept of triangular cooperation that for the first time mentions elements and is adopted by consensus. These elements refer to a combination of different types of resources. It also calls upon the construction of a partnership between different types of actors. It mentions the supplementarity and the mixture between technical and financial resources, and also it brings us closer to all those participating to find development solutions um, adapted to the local context. This is a paragraph in the text of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action Plus 40. It is the most important paragraph on triangular cooperation, and it invites us to strengthen it. And let us remember that in the text, we salute the initiative, such as uh, GPI, and the mandate is that the member states work toward an um, effective triangular cooperation. That is the significance of this event. And thank you very much for inviting me as a moderator. Very quickly, I would like to give the floor to these panelists uh, joining me here. They will present their view and their contributions on triangular cooperation. First, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Jorge Moreira da Silva. Director for uh, Development Cooperation at the OECD. 
and uh, then I will introduce the other panelists. Uh, so, you have the floor. I'm cutting my my intervention to make sure that <laughs> that we have the space for the panelists, which is the most uh, important. I'd like to start by. Uh, congratulating uh, you as well as the uh, Jorge Shediak for the great achievement at Papa Plus 40 and the recognition of triangular cooperation uh, uh, as a modality per se, as well as the mandate that the GPI uh, uh, received from the Papa Plus 40 uh, outcome uh, document. Uh, at Papa Plus 40, uh, we launched the report with, uh, with, with GPI. Uh, Elisa and Noel uh, uh, were uh, obviously very much uh, involved. We, we launched this report um, sharing evidence and stories from the field. Uh, it was an impressive uh, outcome of the collaboration uh, with the GPI members, 44 uh, government representatives, civil society, private sector, philanthropy, academia, and sub subnational governments shared experiences from around 100 projects. Uh, and we believe that this report is a first step towards providing evidence uh, on the very variety of uh, trilateral uh, partnerships. Uh, now we need to build uh, on the evidence base and learn more about the results of triangular cooperation. That's why uh, we at uh, the OECD are currently developing uh, fo follow-up studies on enabling effective triangular cooperation, pilots uh, of the toolkit for identifying, monitoring and evaluating the value added of triangle cooperation with the European Union and project partners across Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, and also a paper uh, on trends in engaging in uh, civil society organizations in triangular cooperation, insights from uh, India with our dear friends from uh, RIS uh, India. The GPI is working full speed ahead of the follow-up uh, to BAPA Plus 40, and as part of that, today I have the honor to uh, um, highlight uh, uh, the GPI's voluntary guidelines for effective triangular cooperation. Our colleagues from uh, Canada and Mexico have worked hard uh, with many of you to find guidance for implementing more effective triangular cooperation, uh, not least by linking the uh, effective principles with those of South-South cooperation and the 2030 agenda in the following guidelines. Uh, and in this PowerPoint, just in this slide, you have the nine uh, principles that uh, uh, are part of these voluntary guidelines, the country ownership and demand-driven cooperation, shared commitment, focus on results, uh, inclusive partnerships and multi-stakeholder dialogues, transparency and accountability, innovation and co-creation, uh, this joint learning and knowledge sharing for sustainable development, uh, advancing the gender equality uh, and empowerment of women and, and girls, and finally, uh, leaving no one behind. So we have no time to go uh, into a very detailed presentation. I'm very sorry I have planned to go into a more detailed presentation, but at least I wanted to, to name the, 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 nine, uh, the nine principles. Uh, we launched these guidelines in Argentina, and today uh, uh, it will be very important not only to have your support uh, uh, for these guidelines, uh, but also ensuring that we are uh, going for implementation. Uh, we look for, for an inspiring discussion on how can we implement these guidelines for more uh, effective triangular cooperation. And to conclude, also highlighting, as we are among uh, friends of triangular cooperation, that the next uh, milestone is the meeting uh, in Lisbon on the 15th, 16th October to continue uh, uh, our exchange uh, on the follow-up of the BAPA Plus 40. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jorge. And uh, now I will uh, introduce the next speaker, Tiago Maeda from the Institute for Development Cooperation in Brazil, Tiago. Moderator, thank you, panelists. Uh, I had a really difficult task here to talk about uh, on behalf of uh, more than 200 million uh, workers of the world in less than five minutes uh, working we've been doing, doing in decades uh, on uh, solidarity, supporting uh, through develop development cooperation uh, throughout uh, different regions of the world. But uh, I would like to start, uh, as mentioned, in, uh, we trade unions, we are 
relevant actors in the developed cooperation uh, for years. And uh, it's uh, the same from a uh, triangular cooperation for what we had a lot of different uh, histories to share. And uh, I'd like to uh, highlight at least two of them, uh, which I think are very emblematic. In uh, Latin America, we had uh, in Caribbean, uh, in fact, we have a project uh, with uh, IT in which, uh, which are led by uh, Trade Unions Confederation of uh, America, a regional uh, confederation and uh, received support from uh, trade unions from Canada, Europe, and uh, other countries from Latin America to organize workers in uh, IET. In fact, it uh, already helped uh, organizing more than 17,000 uh, workers. And uh, for example, in the, between the 25 uh, enterprises in the free trade zones of IT on 17, we helped them to organize the trade unions. The other one uh, I would like to mention is uh, the PANAF project, uh, a project led by uh, Swedish uh, trade union uh, cooperation. Belgium and Brazilian Trade Union Cooperation uh, working together with the African Trade Union Confederation and OATU, another uh, regional confederation of Africa, with several uh, trade unions in uh, more than uh, 20 countries in Africa in uh, terms of education, and this project uh, is being running now for more than uh, 30 years, and uh, we've been working uh, on education of uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, workers, uh, men and women, throughout Africa. And uh, all these uh, I like to uh, start and share because uh, I need to emphasize that uh, uh, trade unions consider uh, triangular cooperation a very important mechanism to push uh, 2030 agenda, to push sustainable development, to push uh, a just world, but uh, we don't mean that uh, any kind of uh, triangular cooperation we are pushing. Uh, so uh, I like to uh, point some uh, issues that uh, we concerned a lot. I think uh, one point uh, we consider that we need to prioritize decent work and uh, climate justice and triangular, triangular cooperation, for example, in uh, standing social protection coverage and working on ensuring adequate, adequate living wages uh, for all. Uh, one uh, issue that uh, is very important for us and is tackled by uh, the voluntary guideline are the accountability of uh, triangular cooperation, which uh, is very important to be held, uh, especially concerned to private sector when they are engaging in uh, triangular cooperation. And uh, in terms of uh, participation, we consider that uh, trade unions and civil society organizations should participate in the whole life cycle of uh, tri uh, triangular cooperation projects. Uh, but for that, we need uh, some uh, preconditions as uh, social dialogue uh, and uh, enabling environment and uh, so we can ensure uh, democratic ownership of the projects. And uh, lastly, uh, I would like to remark the importance of uh, the GPDC Kampala principles uh, on effective private sector engagement and we need to make it clear that uh, the labor rights, labor's, international labor standards are respected uh, on uh, trade, uh, triangular cooperation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tiago. Now I have uh, the pleasure to introduce Rami Hamad, a senior advisor for the president of the Islamic Development Bank. Uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator, and I'll see what I can do in these few minutes. <laughs> I, I, I see multilateral development bank, so I don't know, maybe this is something. I'm, I don't really represent all the MDBs, but, uh, <laughs> bueno. but, but let, let, let me just say a few things. Uh, I like the triangle. Apparently, it brings more value than the straight line. Uh, 
South-South, if you would like to think of it. But that doesn't mean that South-South is really out of date and completely not used or anything like this. Depending on the circumstances, there are opportunities to really optimize on South-South. There are opportunities to really scale up and get into more triangular cooperation, which is the subject of today's uh, meeting. In the past, of course, South-South uh, was believed to uh, countries would see themselves at equal par. As you mentioned in the introduction, this is no longer the idea here. It's about value. What can we bring to the table? From the north, from the south, whatever we can solve development problems. So IDB is a south-south organization. We have 57 member countries from Indonesia in the east to Morocco in the west. Now we say to Guyana and Suriname in the west. But uh, the idea of donor and recipient is definitely out of the vocabulary of a bank like the Islamic Development Bank. So you can see that uh, we started since the inception of the bank some 40 years ago with technical cooperation and we had technical cooperation programs uh, since then. And the reason I'm saying this because this evolved into what we call now reverse linkage. We have a division for reverse linkages. Uh, this is the division that created this uh, small animation in the beginning. And the idea is to go to countries and at the same time when we ask what can IDB do for you, and this is maybe into the question of what MDBs can do, we should really identify and ask what can your country also do to the rest of the memberships. At least in our case it's the 57 member countries, but other MDBs can ask the same questions. We need to identify what this country can really help with other countries. So it's uh, to the question of what can MDBs do, it needs to be part of the programming. It needs to be part upstream in the programming activities and the strategy formulation of MDBs with the countries. And I think this is a missing link. We need to bring this to the MDBs radar. The reason I took this long uh, introduction is be re really the, the, the experiences of the South need not to be ignored. We learned that short-term hit-and-run technical type of cooperation does not do the trick, are not sustainable solutions. We learned that we are basically focusing on the activities. We celebrate the ribbon cutting. We celebrate the end of the project. We celebrate the end of the disbursement. While we really need to celebrate the results, when the results are obtained, and this is something I think we need to bring into the uh, vocabulary of many of the MDBs. We are also missing on <coughs> a lot of opportunities, identifying a pool of expertise. People solve the problems even in least developed member countries. Unfortunately, the tendency is to pick up the phone and call Washington or call Paris or do something like this. And I think we need to have a paradigm shift in thinking. Even LDMCs, they have something to offer in certain areas, in certain problems. And we need to also bring this into the MDB literature, basically. So uh, I will move forward, the principles were covered somehow, but uh, let me pick and choose a couple of them. I really love these principles. So uh, MDBs ne really need to keep in mind so many things to, to, to really be effective. And uh, the principles are nice, and I heard somebody this morning saying, we have enough principles, let's just implement them. So let's just uh, pick some of them. I think the uh, tri -co uh, triangular cooperation should really respect the national priorities. That's one of the principles. But the intervention should really be based on demand based rather than uh, a supply base. We're good in solving this problem somewhere else and this is why we can offer it to you. It needs to be bottom up and we need to be patient with this, especially people who are good in solving some problems somewhere else. So we need to give the work back to the beneficiary. This is how we build capacity in an adaptive uh, fashion. Yes, we facilitate as MDBs. Yes, we help, but we really should give the work back to the beneficiaries. And forgive me for all the uh, experts in the room. Uh, I, d I don't believe in the best practice notion. Best practice was best practice for a certain problem in a certain country for a certain uh, solution. But in the cases of many of the developing countries, we really need to have, maybe there are good practices that we need to be enlightened with, but for each, problem, each country, it has to have its own best practices. If you take a very nice tree and you chop it, you take it and plant it somewhere else, you think it's going to give you the same fruits? 
is it going to be the same? It's going to be this, give you the same beauty? No, of course, because the soil elements are different. And by this metaphor, many countries mimicked Singapore regulations on doing business. Singapore is one of the top-ranked countries in, in, in doing business. These developing countries did not move even a few notches in the ranking of the, because the regulations in Singapore are different. They cannot work in the developing countries everywhere. So we need to really grow out of this best practice with all due respect to the experts who use this. Uh, triangular cooperation should really respect also peer-to-peer -peer exchange process. The MDBs can play facilitating role, catalytic role, but we really need to respect the choices of the providers and the recipients. This is good in the long run. This is how we build capacity in the country. And we, this is how we get to be more effective. Otherwise, we will be pushing people to be isomorphic mimicry. They just want to look good in the eyes of the North donor somehow. And we really need to move out of this. To conclude, uh, and thanks for your patience, just one minute. Uh, we, we, we really, speaking of the SDGs, this is the true spirit of SDG 17, partnership. And it has to be targeted towards results. Examples could be many. You mentioned the SDG 8, and I really appreciate this. But there are many, many, many ways of, of really having the triangular uh, cooperation, and there is no time to give examples. But I really thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And IDB remains open for the member states, basically, to help in whatever advances the development needs in that particular country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I want to uh, introduce Gabriel Ferrero de la Loma Osorio, General Director for Sustainable Development uh, of the Foreign Affairs and Cooperation Ministry in Spain. Anna. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, actually, for all of you. Uh, I want to speak in Spanish also, a great interpreters that we have today and uh, make our job easy. It's an honor for Spain to participate in this session, especially because uh, triangular cooperation from the beginning of the century it has been for us, our cooperation, a way to focus and horizontally cooperate in very important ways. Especially, we developed it with our partners in Latin America and the Caribbean, our sister and brother, sister countries, that uh, if, as a matter of fact, since the end of the 90s, we started identifying ways in which the impact and efficiency of our own programs would increase and be better, significantly better, when there was the participation of other actors, especially other national or community actors that are close to where we used to traditionally have our development programs. So from the beginning of the last century, we made an effort in Spain to create capacities and cooperate to, with the agencies that uh, do South and Southern Triangular Cooperation in many of our partner countries to consolidate capacities and develop their own strategies, South-South strategies. We have here a lot of our partners, uh, partner countries uh, speak about it, and I'm so glad to share the space with them. I will speak about specific programs for specific sectors in countries that have specific issues that they're facing in that specific country. So to begin, I wanted to propose uh, a focus in, in the complementarity of triangular cooperation in our global perspective uh, of cooperation, because we have all adopted the 2030 agenda in 2015, and we adopted a fundamental change in paradigm, uh, in social development paradigms, which include universality, as we all know. And from that moment, we all, by agreement, from all the partner parts, we all became in countries in development of sustainable development. And we agreed to the exchange and sharing of experiences, breaking all the south-north donor receptor dynamic that had guided our previous development agenda. So that is why we propose a space for co-creation of capacities and partnering and multi-actor spaces of horizontal learning amongst pairs and uh, peers. And that is um, 
uh, as it was said, progressively we have to be understood or understand this as the mainstreaming of international development activities that need to be developed in, in the future to achieve the uh, SDGs and the 2030 development agenda because triangular cooperation can, can multiply and it can be an important multiplicator in the achievement of the SDGs. Another tool, a complementary tool, is the spirit of work together with different parts, different countries, different actors, and, and that I would think we have to mainstream our cooperation in this sense. And this implies also our concern for the efficiency in development in triangular cooperation that needs to be at the center of our concerns. We need to continue increasing efforts because we've seen the results in the progress report for 2018 around efficiency in development and we need to persevere in this because the voluntary parameters that were developed in the Global Partnership Initiative are fundamental and in Spain will incorporate, we welcome and incorporate them in, into a principal framework for work um, and our activities for triangular co cooperation. And with a special emphasis, I cannot obviously take all the uh, uh, guidelines, but I share with the Islamic Development Bank colleague the principle of leadership of partner countries and especially of the country where activities with development impact will be uh, carried out as fundamental and I want to finish this. Mm. Mrs. President, the South-South and triangular cooperation opens extremely important spaces as the Agenda 2030 that I wanted to stress the lessons uh, learned and the governance for implementation of Agenda 2030, the learnings on how to articulate public policies, plans, and sustainable development strategies for SDGs, uh, such as public funding and moving uh, private resources, how to progress in improvement data and statistical systems. These are some elements that through triangular cooperation will be essential to uh, tackle. In order to conclude, Spain has benefited from a south-north cooperation because we've learned from our partner countries to articulate our governance of the 2030. Um, look at Mexico, look at Argentina, uh, Colombia has shown us things. Uh, we've seen the south-north. Um, with the peer and voluntary um, collaboration as well as with Japan in the mutual learning in order to strengthen our own capacities. Thank you. Um, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Gabriel, uh, he deserves a round of applause. So now I would like to give the floor for the closing and concluding remarks to Susumu Kuwahara, Deputy Assistant Minister for International Cooperation from Japan. So, uh, given the significance of triangular cooperation in achieving the 2030 Agenda, we welcome this session on effective triangular cooperation which adds momentum to a collective effort for promoting multi-stakeholder approach, building on the fruitful outcomes of the BAPA Plus 40 in March 2019. We appreciate the GPI's significant contribution, which has enabled developing countries, emerging countries, developed countries, and various non-governmental actors to share each other practical experiences and expertise and to set the table for deepening discussion on shared value for effective triangular cooperation. We expect that the GPI's voluntary guidelines for effective triangular cooperation help forming the foundation of a common understanding on the effectiveness and value added of triangular cooperation on the effective, on the basis of evidence and knowledge provided from the ground. 
Since 1975, Japan has organized third country training programs for more than 3,000 participants per year from all over the world, assuming its role as a kind of pioneer of triangular cooperation. Japan has committed to the GPI's activities along with the Japan International Cooperation Agency. Let us share an example of a triangular cooperation involving the private sector. In Argentina, Japan started a project called the Kaizen Tango in 2017. The Kaizen approach originates in Toyota as a manufacturing methodology to continuously improve quality and productivity. The Kaizen Tango project aims to improve manufacturing productivity in Argentina with the collaboration of Japanese automobile companies. The project successful achievements are now being applied in the development of third country training programs while hosting networks between stakeholders in the Latin American and the African regions. In January of 2019, we hosted a side event at the G20 Development Working Group on Effective Triangular Cooperation. It was noted that monitoring and evaluation and reporting in triangular cooperation provide a solid basis for strengthening mutual learning while honoring the principles of transparency and accountability. In the G20 Osaka Summit, the Reader Declaration clearly mentioned the importance of further enhancing South-South and Triangular cooperation for realizing an inclusive and sustainable development. Going forward, in order to provide structured evidence and knowledge on effective triangular cooperation, Japan is closely working with the OECD to draw up a policy paper on its policy implications, which will be launched at the G20 workshop in October. Collaboration with various actors is essential to improve the effectiveness of development cooperation with the view to achieving the 2030 Agenda. This year, Japan hosted the D20 Osaka Summit in June and will also host TKAT 7 in August. Through these opportunities, Japan aims to further share our experience in development cooperation and will work to expand international partnerships in a more effective and efficient manner. Thank you very much. Bueno, terminamos a tiempo. Eh, muchísimas gracias a todos los... Well, we finished on time. Thank you very much to all the presenters for the different viewpoints uh, concentrated on triangular cooperation. Unfortunately, we don't have time so that the guests would uh, give their reflections on uh, their proposals of each one of you, but you will take this homework uh, home. Now the organizers are inviting us to a coffee break on uh, the fourth floor, and please, uh, be back here at 4 p.m. in order to start the next session. Thank you very much.